Welcome to Physics Learning. This is the third lecture on fiber optics. In this video, I am going to discuss about two important characteristics of optical fiber attenuation and pulse dispersion. Attenuation in optical fiber. Attenuation is the reduction in power of the light signal as it transmitted through an optical core. This is very important characteristic because this characteristic will going to decide how long an optical signal will transmit it or how long it will move in optical core before getting attenuated completely. Okay, so it will be measured by this quantity alpha and it is usually measured in decibel alpha is equals to 10 log 10 pi upon po where pi is the input power po is output power. For example, let's suppose that output power will be half of input after traveling through an optical core, let's say for a kilometer. Okay. In that case, P output is equal to half of P input. If you substitute it here, you will get alpha equals to 3. That means after traveling a distance of 1 kilometer over an optical fiber, the power reduction is half, and in that case, attenuation factor is 3. Okay larger the attenuation it will be much difficult to transmit the light through a long distance for example in 1966 cow and hockham suggested that attenuation factor must be below 20 decibel per kilometer if you want to use optical fiber in communication system but during that time the kind of material available was having very high attenuation okay in 1970 First silica fiber came with attenuation factor below 20 decibel that was around 70 decibel per kilometer. It was well below the suggested limit of Cow and Hawkeye. As a result, optical fiber were slowly getting introduced in the communication system. Right? Attenuation is not only the factor which going to decide that how long and a signal can be transmitted in optical fiber. There is another factor called pulse dispersion. It is very important characteristics that determine the information carrying capacity of an optical fiber in a communication system. The question is what is information carrying capacity? Actually, in communication system, informations are sent in the form of light pulses. Okay, that is there is a light pulse, it will be treated as 1, there is no light pulse, it will be treated as 0. So, in the form of 1, 0, uh, the information will be sent. Okay. So once you will send the information at the input end, it will be received at the output end and if the output end will be able to resolve that signal, then only it will be able to extract out the information, right? Larger the light pulses that can be sent and resolved at receiver end, larger will be the information carrying capacity. But how much information will be transmitted per second will be going to decided by this factor pulse dispersion. So what is the pulse dispersion? Usually pulses of light sent in optical fiber get broadened in time as it propagates through it and this phenomena is known as pulse dispersion. Okay, so as light getting broadened and broadened after some time, if two light pulses get overlap, it won't be able to be resolved at the receiver end. As a result, at the receiver end, you won't be able to clearly extract out the information. Okay, what is the cause of this pulse dispersion? There are two major causes of pulse dispersion. First one is intermodal dispersion. Different ray takes different time to propagate through a given length of optical fiber. As a result, the pulse get dispersed okay the second reason is material dispersion which is commonly known to us from our class 11 12 source emit over a wide range of wavelength and we know that different wavelength takes different amount of time to propagate through a medium due to intrinsic property of that material right and that's why light get dispersed we know the dispersion of light in a prism right so this is known to us. So there are two major reasons, intermodal dispersion and material dispersion. So let's try to understand the pulse dispersion in optical fiber. In this case, we will take a step index fiber. So this is our optical fiber, core and cladding. 
and let's say that input light is incidenting with an angle i and it get refracted at the outside medium and core and let's say the angle of refraction is theta and then again it will be further refracted at core cladding surface but in this case if incident angle phi is greater than the critical angle then light will totally internally reflected and light will propagate through this optical core that is the basic fundamental of optical fiber because light propagation is based on the total internal reflection right now let's mark this position a b and c how we can calculate this pulse dispersion pulse dispersion can be easily calculated by calculating the time taken by light to move through this medium okay let's say the time taken by the light or pulse to cover a distance a b as light is not directly moving in a straight line it is moving through a c and c b then t will be distance upon velocity of light in the core medium so distance is a c plus c b and velocity of light within the core is velocity of light in the vacuum divided by refractive index of medium that is c upon n1 okay now from the geometry it is very easy we can easily say that a b is equals to cos theta into a c plus c b that you can easily do just by drawing a perpendicular from c to a b so you will have two triangles one in the left side one in the right side so from the left side you can easily write that half of a b is equals to a c cos theta and from the right side of triangle you can say half of a b is equals to b c cos theta okay so just by adding you will get a b so this is the time taken by light to cover a distance a b as the light ray repeat itself in order to propagate so the total time taken to cover a distance l of fiber is let's say t l and it will be equals to n1 l upon c cos theta okay now look at this relation tl is equals to n1 l upon c cos theta here tl depend upon theta and theta will depend upon i so depending upon angle of incident light will take different time to travel through this optical core and as a result it will lead to pulse dispersion okay pulse dispersion we can easily calculate just by calculating the difference between the maximum value of tl and minimum value of tl mathematically tl will be minimum when cos theta will be maximum that is cos theta has to be 1 physically light should move in a straight line in this medium so theta will be 0 that is i will be 0 so you just substitute it here and you will get tl minimum which is n1 l upon c now to calculate the maximum value of tl we need to rewrite this relation in different form okay from this figure you can easily write that theta plus phi is equals to pi by 2 so theta is equals to pi by 2 minus phi just substitute it here so you will get the different kind of relation for tl tl will be n1 l upon c sin phi okay now from this relation we can calculate the maximum value of tl and tl will be maximum when psi phi will be minimum that is for minimum value of phi and minimum value of phi must be critical angle because if phi is less than critical angle then light won't totally internally reflected and light won't propagate through this optical core so when phi is equals to phi c from snell's law we can write sin phi c is equals to n2 upon n1 so just substitute it here and you will get the maximum value of tl Therefore, the maximum value of TL is equals to n1 square L upon C n2. Now, assume that all input ray excited simultaneously. In that case, at the output end, a ray would occupy a time interval duration of capital T, which will be equals to T max minus T mean, and that will be equals to n1 L upon C times n1 upon n2 minus 1. Typically, n1 is approximately equals to 1.5 and n1 minus n2 upon n1 is approximately equals to 0 0.01 and if you assume that your optical fiber 
is of a length of 1 kilometer then in that case t will be 50 nanosecond per kilometer that is pulse will broaden by 50 nanosecond after traveling a 1 kilometer of distance now let's understand by looking at this plot at input end suppose you are sending a light pulse of width tau 1 then after traveling through the optical fiber at output end the width of this pulse will increase and let's say in that case tau 2 okay as long as the two pulses are not overlapping to each other we can resolve it at the output end but due to this pulse dispersion if two light pulses will overlap then information will be lost so that's how pulse dispersion introduce a limitation over a information carrying capacity to make it clear let's say you are sending two light pulses are separated by 100 nanosecond after a traveling of distance of 1 kilometer they get uh, dispersed by amount of 50 nanosecond still they won't overlap to each other and we will be able to resolve it completely at output end but now say the length of optical fiber is 2 km. In that case, the dispersion of light pulse will be 100 nanosecond. And as two pulses are separated by a distance of 100 nanosecond, they will start overlapping. And we won't be able to resolve it completely. So, what we have to do in this case? After each 1 km, we have to use a repeater. Or our input pulse should be separated by much larger time gap if we want to send it through a longer optical fiber right so that's how the length of optical fiber and the information sending capacity will be decided by pulse dispersion okay so hope it is clear to you see you in the next lecture where we will discuss about ray path in order to calculate the pulse dispersion in a graded index optical fiber thank you